Okay, we're looking at the Lieutenant by Kate Grenville. At the current state is what I've got. These are the themes, symbols, motifs, and I'm adding some more motifs up here as we go, just as they occur to me and as they're spread out before me. On this page I've got literary devices as I find them, and again I'll be adding them as I go. So we're starting with part one, The Young Lieutenant. So your first quote, Daniel Rook was quiet, moody, a man of few words. So that's our symbol for knowledge, not knowledge, language rather. So we'll highlight that. And then we have culture. He had no memories other than of being an outsider. So his understanding of culture is that he's not a part of it. So we've got language and culture. So as you'll see throughout this chapter, he's a lot more connected to the ideas of the world than he is the actual people within it, or the or rather the actual practices within it. So he was looking under the desk at a notebook in which he was collecting his special numbers. So our motif is numbers. And then on page five, his father now had the rictus of a smile that meant his son was exposing his oddness to a stranger. So I'm putting here fear, because his parents are afraid. Uh, I'm also going to put ASD. So Kate Granville herself said that she didn't intend for him to be perceived as on the spectrum or anything else, but um, I've got oddness instead, uh, and I'm just going to write ASD as a sort of a shorthand form of that. So whether you decide it's ASD or just some other form of oddness is kind of up to you. And here we've got some culture. So we, we get a bit of a contrast here. In the world of Church Street, Benjamin Rook was a man of education and standing, a father to be proud of. But at the Pl Portsmouth Naval Academy a mile away, he was an embarrassment. A clerk, oh dear with me. So the big difference between the two cultures, kind of the high and the low. And then seven, but he could not find the words to tell her now he had lost himself. So again, he struggles with language, but he loves language and he sort of develops an interest through maths first, but then later coming to language as well. So Rook learned at last that true cleverness was to hide such thoughts. So we'll put knowledge there, he's actually learned that. That's key knowledge for him, that sort of is his guiding principle in life and they became a kind of shame, a secret thing to be indulged in only in private. So that's our oddness piece. And conversation was a problem he could not solve as well. So we've got secrecy here. He's learned to kind of hide his oddness, but that it's something... That, so he's learned to hide his oddness, but he's also learned that he finds conversation tricky because, because of his very oddness as well. And then at other times he talked too much, so again, that's his oddness. Sometimes he doesn't talk enough, sometimes he doesn't pick up on social cues, and sometimes he runs too fast. Uh, we're talking about him getting bullied here at uh, Portsmouth College, so I'm going to put that as the culture and the sort of bystander concept that the boys just let it go. They're familiar with it. Rook puzzled about the ideas as he puzzled about his prize. So this is talking about slavery. And it's a comparison or a juxtaposition, I guess, which we might add to our literary devices. Uh, so we can show off and say the word juxtaposition. Uh, a juxtaposition is, in essence, just just a juxtaposition. Uh, comparing two things that are opposite, black and white, etc. Alright, then we've got uh, we've got intertextual re intertextual references, which is when they've actually got the name, and this is an allusion, so it's just an excerpt from Euclid, and I'm going to highlight Euclid seemed an old friend for friendship, because he doesn't have many friendships, or even kind of strange ones will count as that. Now, things that equal the same thing also equal one another, the whole is greater than the part. That we will just highlight for knowledge because that's his, his knowledge base. He's obviously memorised that or he's reading it as we speak. Uh, and we also add, though it's not clearly a technique, we're just going to add italics, uh, which mostly are his internal thoughts. 
and it's also used in a num number of different ra ways than just that, but sort of build that up as we go through the text. So Ru Rook spent fruitless hours wishing that Euclid or Kepler were still alive to con converse with him. So again, that's as close as yes to friendship as it at, the, at this point in the book, and it's also representative of his very oddness. And then down here we've got a metaphor, a door opened in a world that had seemed nothing but war. So he's learning music. You could even add music as a symbol if you like. But it will be short-lived. Then there was the machine itself. So that's the symbol or the motif of the machine. Uh, which fits, he also talks about the kind of British colony as a machine as well. He listened as if he had as many ears as fingertips and like a blind man could feel textures that were barely there. So it's a nice beautiful metaphor. And then it was a conversation. So again that's quite odd for him to think of a song piece as a conversation but that's probably the closest he gets to a conversation at times. Then God made himself plain mathematics. So that's his love of numbers. And you'll see that um, you could probably use a different symbol to tie all these together. Numbers, letters, and also music. Um, because they were also his way of making sense of the world. So from the first chapter we get a really, really clear and beautiful understanding of this character and how he's odd. Uh, the way he sort of came to be who he is. And so we've sort of got our call to adventure going to the new new thing, we've shown his parents' fear and sort of his love of words, language, numbers and music uh, and a couple of metaphors to describe the joy that he takes in those things. So it's a really good, simple, clear beginning. Uh, let me know if you want me to do chapter two and I'll do my best. Cheers.